Good evening, everyone. It's um, fantastic to have so many of you with this e with us this evening, and we hugely appreciate you all giving up um, the next hour and a half to join us. Um, the, the session this evening, there's two key purposes of this evening. Um, the first is to introduce the early work we've been doing on the character and design study, explain what it's all about um, and start to give you a real glimpse into the work that's been undertaken. Mm -hmm. But the second and perhaps more important piece is really to hear how you feel about your neighbourhoods, what's special, what needs protecting and how you want to steer change over the coming years. Um, and to use all that, we want to start thinking about how local characters should inform um, future growth and change and reinforce what makes um, the neighbourhoods and places special rather than detracting from it. It's very much an ongoing conversation. Um, many of you will have been involved in previous studies and pieces of work um, and all of this is feeding into the work. Um, we'll also be having subsequent um, workshops later on in the study to test ideas as they evolve. So today is not your only opportunity um, to feed in. Um, we want to maximise the amount of time we've got this evening, particularly to get your feedback into it. Um, and therefore, um, can I ask that you keep yourself muted just during the presentations, just so that everyone can hear um, all of everything that's being said. Um, but do please note down any questions, thoughts that come to you while we're presenting them um, so that you can then ask those in the workshop breakout groups and have a good discussion around those. Um, please do feel free to use the chat function in both the main session and in the breakout sessions. Um, please try and keep as far as you can um, the, those inputs um, as brief and as friendly as possible just so that we can make sure we can get them all um, fed in. Um, um, so today, this evening's structure, we're going to run through just a bit of an introductory presentation. Um, I'll talk a bit about sort of what is character, why it's important. Um, and Jeff Noble, um, one of our historians, will talk a bit through some of the key themes around the history of Hounslow um, and how that's fed into the neighbourhoods that we see today. I'll then take you through um, some of the results from the survey that many of you really kindly um, got involved with earlier this year. Um, and that will then feed into um, a very short initial workshop session, really just to confirm and refine some of the area boundaries that many of you commented on um, to make sure we've got those right before we move forward. We'll then all come back together into um, the main session. Um, a group of us um, from the team will then talk through some of the um, existing character of each of the parts of the borough, some of the ideas and opportunities for each of those areas too. Um, we'll then come to the sort of biggest piece really in terms of the discussion and your input, um, where we'll break out again into those sub area groups. Um, you'll Sorry, Jane, you're I'm sorry. Sorry, has that just happened? Oh. That was a mistake, sorry. Sorry, no, it's all right. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, then we'll have an opportunity right at the end um, uh, really to have a good discussion about um, each of the areas and what you'd like to see. Um, we're looking to close at half past seven because we're mindful that you're already giving up a good part of your evening. So without further ado, um, I'll just introduce um, the team so you know who we are. Um, so Allies of Morrison and Urban Practitioners is an urbanism practice. So we're a group of from architects, planners, master planners, um, historians and um, everything in between. Um, we're a large practice and so we can draw on lots of expertise through this and we as a team have um, been involved in a lot of characterisation studies, particularly in different London boroughs um, and all of us really, really enjoy um, getting to understand different places and really starting to draw the threads of what's important in these places through into how they grow in the future and making sure these places stay special. 
Um, this is just a, a sort of few um, examples of some of the areas where um, we have been working and are currently working, um, just to sort of give you a sense of confidence of us understanding quite how all of this plays into feeding into future planning policy and growth. Now, when we talk about character, um, we, it's certainly more than buildings and spaces. Perhaps sometimes the buildings and the spaces are the easiest things to draw on um, about what makes character. But we certainly believe it's much wider than that. It's about social, historical and physical character and crucially the way that those things interplay to make up the places that you experience every day and what makes them important. When we're thinking about quite how character feeds through into being important, it's how all of those elements play in together. So the physical character of places, the buildings, the rivers, the topography, all the aspects that actually have a sort of imprint on the ground. It's also about the history and the current society in areas. So how those layers of change over time have left their mark how different societies have come in and used the physical environment um, and how they've left their mark too. Um, and it's also about understanding the existing development, the more recent changes that have happened and how each of those layers um, have started to influence current challenges and how areas have responded. All of that very much comes together into what we sort of talk about as the so what of it's great to understand character, but more important, it's about making that link to how an understanding of current character can properly influence future change. Now, within this in Hounslow, we've got a great um, resource to already draw on. So um, the previous urban character study that was done back in 2014 is a hugely detailed piece of work. And so we are by no means um, starting from scratch. Um, there's also a lot of other existing work and ongoing work. So some of the local plans like the West of Borough local plan, the Great West Corridor pieces of work of master plan work, lots of things to draw on. Um, to really feed into it, as well as um, the emerging town centre master plans, which many of you are inputting to at the same time. Our work then looks to draw on all of that, but crucially make that leap to understanding how character should inform future policy. So what should be the design guidance for how further intensification happens in different parts of the borough? How should that be different in different places? to properly understand um, how um, local character is understood. Now, all the way through this and all the other pieces of work, all of that is shaped by community engagement and it makes um, sessions like this evening really important to make sure what's understood to be special and important is very much fed by local people that live and breathe these places. Um, what we're aiming at, I suppose, ultimately is um, something of context led design so that we don't end up with developments in different parts of the borough that could be designed for anywhere they should be bespoke responses to local character and it's trying to really ensure that the rules of the game are set quite clearly um, and that they feed through to ultimately to design codes um, one key aspect of all of this is understanding the history of places um, and I'll hand over shortly to Jeff will take you through some of the headline themes really in terms of how the boroughs evolved but the history is important because it's informed some really crucial things that exist today like the street pattern the types of building exists how buildings have changed in terms of their uses and how flexible and resilient they've been to that but they also it also has an important part in the social history and the layers of communities that live in the area so ultimately that past helped us to shape the future and therefore acknowledging that character is a shifting thing is a really important piece. So Jeff, I'll pass over to you um, to take us just briefly through some of the his historic aspects. Thank you, Jane. As, as you say, um, if you don't understand where you've come from, you won't know where you're going. And that's why with all these projects, we, we do like to delve into the past. Uh, not for its own sake, but because we, we feel that that in, informs uh, our understanding of the place as it is and, and how it will shape up. Uh, this is a borough that's barely uh, two, half a century old, um, and yet there are 2,000 years of history here. 
Um, so I'm going to have to speak quite fast because I've got five minutes. So that's about uh, that's about 15 seconds a century. So um, Jane, you might have to flip through these things if I don't prompt you. Um, but I'm going to cheat anyway because I'm going to jump right ahead to the 1750s because uh, I think uh, um, setting aside the the prehistoric remains of the era, the Roman history and medieval history, all of which is tremendously interesting, uh, this was essentially. Uh, a rural area until the 1750s and then things began to change uh, most dramatically really and that was a result of the communications, it was to do with industry, it was to do with the growth of London itself and so you can just see there in the coloured in bits how, how the area got denser as, as the area became more built up. Um, so uh, next please. And so just bringing all those together, those different shades of purple there show the previous slides, bringing together the different phases of development. And you see there's quite a complex picture there of railway lines, of roads, of uh, tube stations, Heathrow Airport, all of these things um, have been shaped by uh, the, the, the physical and uh, historical evolution of the area. Next. And so, so what we're left with is a very complex area. There's some parts of the borough that are extremely old. Uh, you can see on this uh, little extract from a map of 1790, um, uh, just how some names that are familiar to us today were, were still very much present then. There are other parts where they've sliced through that history. And so like the M4 or the Great West Road, which have, have really imposed themselves on, uh, on a much earlier landscape. Next. And some of the, of the areas that we've identified as character areas um, speak for themselves in a way, and they have very strongly defined identity. Um, Chiswick High Road being one perhaps, but then there are other areas where their character is more indeterminate, and that's again a reflection of their past. Um, and, and then there aren't necessarily hard lines between places. Sometimes they, they overlap and merge. Uh, there are some places where there's a very strong identity and the historic qualities are deeply uh, ingrained and uh, they're very much part of the spirit of the place and there are others that are more transient and fragile and there may be more things going on in those areas there may be more opportunities for improvement and then some parts of the borough inevitably are quite dense and urban uh, there's a kind of uh, in intensity to those places uh, and then other areas uh, on the edges are much more low-key uh, and, and spread out more diffuse Next. And then there are places that in between, uh, that again, as a consequence of some of these changes that have resulted from uh, infrastructure, whether that's been roads or railways or even the canals, uh, areas have become dislocated. And then sometimes there have been abrupt changes through new development at a, at a, a jolt in the different scale or intensity of development in places. And then there are other developments that have kind of turned their back on places. And so these have left their own legacy. But we've identified a number of themes uh, that really can be drawn out of this history, one of which I've really touched on already, which is movement. Uh, the Thames itself was a main highway really for, for, for centuries. Uh, there were roads, of course, Roman roads across the area, but the Thames itself was an important artery and a place where people lived and worked close to the river. Uh, but then there were the canals, the railways brought in tremendous growth and change to the area. And then, uh, of course, uh, Heathrow uh, has had a huge impact on the, the nature of the place. And so this is a borough that's not just self-contained, of course, it's very much part of London, it's part of the metropolis. But this is reflected in the, in the kind of grain and identity of the place today. When you look at the, the, the old roads um, that still survive, you can see that imprint on the ground. Um, so uh, Chiswick High Road uh, running through uh, to Staines Road, London Road, uh, ancient ancient thoroughfares, um, and then we've plotted roads of different vintages there, going right up to the M4, cutting across Osterley Park. These have all had their own effect. Another theme that we thought was particularly interesting is the way Hounslow has always been a place of work, going from uh, a, a, an agricultural economy, but quite early industrializing water power is used not just from the Thames but the Duke of Northumberland River was cut through to provide power so that's that's had its own story to tell and that's very much evident in place today. Next and of course it's it's a, a place where the, the, the many people live in this area 
um, and that's all, all shapes and sizes of housing developments, some of which is tremendously interesting in social and architectural terms. Bedford Park, for example, uh, really internationally known as a kind of pioneering urban suburb. And then some of the new development that's taking place in the borough uh, is, is, uh, is stri striking its own identity and bring, bringing a new uh, quality to the character of the place. And uh, not least, there's a str strong cultural legacy in this borough. I mean, there's some wonderful parks, very historic buildings, uh, the great estates, and uh, there's kind of the, the legacy of these things are very important in terms of shaping the, uh, the character and quality of the place. And that's continuing um, with, uh, with social change as well, with, with different communities establishing themselves in the area, bringing a new vitality uh, through food and languages and, and cultural um, performing arts and so forth, as well as affecting the built environment. So bringing all that together, just this, this map reminds us of the, of the designated heritage in the area, which there's a lot of the, the, blue, the blue areas of parks and gardens, there are lots of listed buildings, uh, sites of archaeological importance, but there's an awful lot more uh, that this map doesn't show of things which contribute to this and, and they, each character area uh, has, has something of, of note and interest in it. So well, we feel this is a very important point to spring from in terms of understanding the nature and quality of the place. Thank you, Jeff. So taking that and lots of the sort of more detailed analysis that the team have done um, is then sort of trying to understand how we best communicate that variety and character. Clearly, there are huge differences across from in very short um, spaces of time around character throughout the borough. Um, so mapping all sorts of layers gives us a sense of understanding that nature of change and transition, but also a sense of some of the common characteristics that exist either borough-wide or through parts of the borough. The role of identifying neighbourhood character areas, so understanding a sort of scale of a neighbourhood um, is really important. It allows us to sort of understand how places actually work, how um, they function in terms of how people relate to them. Um, it allows us to sort of also communicate a sense of similar character. It's not perhaps a definite statement and I suppose crucially given the sort of scale that we're talking about, there will be disagreements, there will be overlaps. And so we can't do absolute hard line boundaries on areas, but it is important to try to resolve a sense of understanding differences and similarities. Now, drawing from a lot of the work that's been already undertaken, um, there's all sorts of boundaries that we can start to draw into this. So the previous 2014 study um, provided sort of district um, study areas, um, 11 of those, many of those you will have fed into as part of earlier um, consultations. It then also broke those areas down into much more detailed character areas. And so these really defined areas of very similar character that people could really assign very specific characteristics to. Now that's a huge wealth of information um, and gives us a great basis um, in terms of updating that understanding of character. In that though is a real need though to understand what is most useful in starting to um, steer future change and to provide those sort of parameters of what is and isn't acceptable in different areas. Now in doing that we need to find a scale of interest that works. Now if we have it too small we run the risk of having um, sort of embedding issues in perhaps some areas where perhaps it's defining a character that isn't all in itself positive. Um, if we take it too wide, then we perhaps don't reflect enough of the real sort of special qualities within local areas. So we need to have a scale that is meaningful enough to consider local character, that it's perhaps sort of big enough to be in, in sync with a wider area and to make sense. Um, but it also helps us to deal with some of the transitions between characters and allow for that evolution in the future. To do that, we feed in all sorts of information, lots of the information that um, Jeff pulled on in terms of the history about the patterns of development, where the sort of historic cores of places are. 
um, understanding those areas which have very perhaps consistent and historic character so conservation areas particularly become quite interesting to map and to understand their extent but equally the sort of wider understanding beyond just those historic gems of the typologies of buildings that exist. Is it mainly Victorian terraces? Is it more about 20th century suburban development? Other path aspects and perhaps more about the sort of function of um, character areas. So in terms of movement um, and how people relate to stations and quite the sort of catchment of each of these. Equally, the nature of green infrastructure and particularly how people relate to parks and how they sort of adopt them as part of um, neighbourhoods. Equally, green spaces can be the edges between places um, and perhaps sort of become shared resources between different um, areas of character. Other more natural aspects are around um, rivers. So within, within um, Hounslow, River Crane, um, Cranford and, and the Longford River all become really important um, in terms of edges as well as sort of uh, defining features. Other land uses that perhaps are sort of often more hidden like employment uses equally they can often become edges um, between sort of character areas. Town centres perhaps on the on the flip side of that often become the focus and so become the the sort of centre of some character areas and often they're the historic cause out from which development has happened. But there's also sort of other elements that feed into this so political boundaries, um, organisational boundaries like the area forums that exist within Hounslow of how people have got grown to understand their area and the conversations that happen about their future. So the work that we've done over the last couple of months is to try to draw all of that together. And this map shows where we got to um, at the beginning of this year in trying to find that right scale of character area, but drawing in all of those boundaries based on um, the analysis. Now that provided a really useful basis for us to consult on and so the survey was really um, focusing on those boundaries. Um, lots of you fed in brilliant and really useful um, productive um, feedback into that survey. It was about kind of testing those neighbourhoods but also starting to understand what you felt was important around it. We had over 750 comments which has been fantastic and so we focused on trying to understand um, the thoughts on that and then refining some of those character areas um, to inform that. And this first workshop session will just be to test those in particular. So one of the questions we asked was, to what extent do you feel the boundaries on the map match what you think of as your neighbourhood? Now, the key messages that came out of that, so lots of people understandably not quite sure the purpose of the exercise, the scale of those character areas and why we were looking to achieve that level. Equally, lots of comments around how people understood the names of their area. So um, Chiswick, particularly people feeling that was seen as a whole and not unsure why we needed to separate within them. And on that same thing at the other scale of sort of lots of names of places that people felt they really um, responded to and understood as their local area not being reflected. And so we've sought to try and take all of those aspects um, and refine um, the boundaries that we've shown and the names that we've got in there. Um, Lots of um, comments on particularly on the boundaries and the extent of those areas, particularly um, sort of disagreements within Chiswick are sort of where people felt most keenly um, that those boundaries needed to change. And so that's reflected in sort of the um, volume of changes we've made um, to those. If I run through quickly those changes and then when we break out into the groups, you'll have a chance just to look at the sort of detail of what those areas now look like. Um, and that 10 minutes is really to sort of focus on that. So for the Chiswick um, um, Brentford area, we particularly um, made changes, particularly on that sort of um, Chiswick core area. So um, the comment was to sort of take Chiswick Riverside up to the A4 and rename the area as Grove Park and Strand on the Green. And you'll see in the bottom plan, which shows that what, what we're now proposing is sort of taking that on board. Um, I think a sort of concern around sort of calling a part of Chiswick, Chiswick, we've sort of taken that on board and now extended um, the sort of reflection of how Chiswick is um, seen within the area. 
Um, we've also renamed and changed the boundaries around some of the aspects around Gunnersbury, um, reading, renaming that Gunnersbury and West Chiswick to reflect um, comments there. And also within Brentford, a real sense of people felt that great, the Great West Road was a, was an important part of Brentford and it wasn't something entirely separate, despite it sort of running through. It was a big part of sort of how Brentford operates. And so we've renamed that as well. Um, as we move west, um, we've made some changes around Isleworth, so extending the old Isleworth um, boundary to the south to reflect the um, proposed revision to the conservation area boundary. We've also renamed um, South Hounslow to South Hounslow and West Isleworth to reflect how people felt that that's related to both areas and also renamed um, Ivy Bridge to South, South Isleworth and Ivy Bridge to re reflect that it is much more than the Ivy Bridge estate. As we move further west, then looking um, around um, in the F Feltham area, we've extended the Hanworth Park to take in the Wigley Road estate and restructured um, Butts Farm to be Butts Farm and Crane Park. So a few shifts in the boundary there to better reflect um, how people relate to it on the ground. And just a minor change to Hounslow to move it from being Hounslow Town Centre to Hounslow Town to reflect particularly the volume of residential within that character area. So we come to this proposed updated plan, and this is what we'd just like to spend a little bit of time in the breakout rooms um, discussing. This sort of reflects where we think we've got to um, in absorbing all of those comments. So it'd be great to just confirm those. Do you agree with those changes made? Are there any boundaries that you disagree with? Um, and perhaps as well with that, are there any areas that should overlap where you think actually that boundary should be a bit more fuzzy and far less hard. So um, Lizzie will now open the breakout rooms. We've pre-assigned um, the breakout rooms based on the area that you indicated you were most interested in. Um, so when she opens them, a box will appear on your screen. Please press join and you'll be directed into the relevant area breakout room. If for any reason the suggested area is wrong, please press not now or later and you'll then be able to choose an alternative area and join that breakout room instead. Um, so please note this session will just be 10 minutes um, long so it's just about the area boundaries. We'll then all come back together, talk through um, some of the issues and opportunities and have a much longer discussion about um, all of that. So Lizzie do you want to open yeah. the breakout pits? OK, everyone. Um, now, I'm sure everyone will have more to say than we, we've sort of quite managed to um, cover in those 10 minutes. But as um, all of you will have been told, we've got obviously got sort of a much longer session um, at the end of this presentation. Now, where we want to really focus the bulk of the discussion is very much on the sort of issues and opportunities and quite how we draw all this through um, to steering the future of different parts of the borough. So what we want to do really is to sort of draw out the distinctiveness of the different areas. What do we want to emphasise? What sort of elements of heritage really need to be um, writ large? Um, how could or should each area continue to evolve? What's the sort of theme on that where should there be sort of enhancements where do things need to change where do things perhaps need to be held back um, and avoid changing too much if we think about it perhaps on a spectrum of sort of growth and change being about repairing reinforcing through to reimagining um, we might sort of put many of the sort of conservation areas and sort of most historic parts around sort of repair between repair and reinforce we might think about some areas which have suffered through many layers of change over the years of wanting to be much more enhanced and to think about sort of a greater transformation. So with that in mind, um, what we want to do as a team is just give you a bit of a glimpse through some of the thoughts that's come out of the analysis of different parts of the borough to help inform a bit of the discussion that we'll have at seven o'clock. So I will whip through, starting from the west end of the borough, um, I'll go through the first two sub areas and then hand over um, to others that will talk through um, the other aspects. So starting with Feltham, Hanworth and Bedfont, um, 
So very much the sort of outer part of the borough, much more rural history, development really being very much focused around a series of villages, um, ancient roots and village greens here. This area was very much large farms, market gardens. Um, over time, that, those areas have been replaced with light industry and latterly housing that came in in the late 19th and early 20th century. That was very much fed through lots of the sort of expansion of railways that Jeff talked about in the first presentation. So throughout the area, we now have a lot of sort of post-war suburban housing in particular, um, and lots of sort of um, garden city style po pockets of development as well that sort of have existed both sort of interwar and post-war. Now, ultimately we sort of ended up with quite a fragmented historic character um, through this area. Lots of sort of aspects have come in, many layers of change and so perhaps some of the sort of hist historic cores of areas are now much more hidden um, but assets, sort of historic assets still exist, sort of Hanworth Park and the historic house um, settings and grounds and that being a kind of core part perhaps within the wider character of the area. As we start to look forward and think about quite how sort of change is happening now, we see very much a sort of fragmented picture of suburban growth. We've got predominantly low rise housing generally characterising much of this western part of the borough. And that is very much sort of the development that is coming forward as well, matching perhaps what's already there. The Feltham Town Centre is very much the main commercial centre and that's seeing all sorts of layers of change and that's been sort of buffeted around over many decades and future ideas now about how that needs to adapt and change. Um, but we've also got sort of a real sense of a rural feel very much still existing right on the western edges. The area still looks very much out to Surrey. Um, but crucially, obviously, we've got the relationship with Heathrow right on its edge and the influence that has in terms of uh, both positively and negatively in terms of um, growth and opportunity. In terms of some of the um, responses to um, survey, some of the things that people are most um, concerned about within this area, the two biggest are around tall buildings and the impact of more residents on local services. And so there's a need to sort of really understand what the scale of development should be um, in this part of the borough, but also when housing growth in particular comes in, quite how that should feed into the way that neighbourhoods already um, work and function and how those community provision is provided. Um, so some questions and these will each appear, each of these slides will appear in the workshop groups when we get there. So the sort of questions that we're sort of asking around this area around how important are the rivers to the identity of the, identity area, perhaps some of them are quite hidden, could they be much more positive in the future? Um, can we think about some of the key historic routes like Staines Road, one of the sort of oldest London roads? Or is there a better and sort of more positive um, role for those routes and perhaps are there enhancements that we might make to the environment along those routes to better reflect that? Um, how do we feel about some of the suburban streets? Are there opportunities to really improve the general living environment in some of the areas? Um, how could we use some of the characteristics and things that are really positive in the area to um, better shape future growth? And when we're thinking about some significant changes, so potentially the growth um, proposed around bed font, how can we make sure that that best sits most comfortably with existing areas and also feeds into um, improvements within local centres and parades? Um, some of those sort of examples, so particularly thinking sort of those opportunities along Staines Road, could we think about how development faces onto the road, how it reflects um, this important historic route? Are there opportunities around in terms of some of those parades of development? Equally, things like the Longford River um, and its relationship into Felton Town Centre. Obviously, there's works and improvements going on within Felton Park, but could that stretch further down and provide actually part of the assets within the town centre and a walking route as well? 
If we move then east to Hounds, sort of West Hounslow, Heston and Cranford, um, again, sort of still quite a rural rural history to this part of um, the borough um, and very much sort of Hounslow Heath being a, a really important part of its early character. And that imprint still exists and certainly some of the sort of key routes that came off Hounslow Heath um, are the sort of focus for many of the developments that followed. Um, lots of sort of interwar and post-war housing, um, relationship with the M4 and Great West Road obviously being really important as big routes that dissect through the area. Um, but lots of kind of history that still sort of it, it has a footprint within the area like Heston Aerodrome, Hounslow Barracks of quite how that sort of fed into the socioeconomic development of the area. Looking now to sort of quite how the sort of historic character is now sort of emerging into future pressure for development. So clearly we've got sort of much, you know, still very much a suburban and low rise residential character that exists within this area. Lots of that interwar and post-war housing. The in impact of those big routes and big infrastructure is very is sort of keenly felt in this area. Um, and crucially, again, the relationship with Heathrow um, and that sort of sense of airways housing. Now, we're still looking out to Surrey a bit. It still feels a bit historic in places, but we've got these um, sort of historic villages of Heston and Cranford um, sort of set within that sort of what was the much wider Heath and quite how we sort of might be able to reflect that in the future. Some of the concerns that exist um, in this area, so things that particularly people are worried about around conversion of garages to dwellings, um, and again, the sort of impact of more residents, this time particularly on local traffic, um, those points sort of being a real kind of issue for local people and therefore a real need to understand how a growth strategy might deal with that um, and better support um, a sort of more sustainable way of developing. Um, just a few questions for you. And again, these will reappear in the workshop groups. Um, sort of what opportunity exists around the River Crane? So the valley sort of runs all the way along that western edge of this area. Quite how could we sort of continue that improvement works around um, the River Crane? Could it be a much more significant part of local character? Um, are there sort of better connections that we can either retrofit or start to sort of introduce between neighbourhoods in a number of these areas, sort of Cranford being an important one. There's lots of sort of barriers to movement between different parts um, of the neighbourhoods. And so is there a way of starting to improve that as we move forward? Um, Hounslow Heath, sort of an idea about good could perhaps the historic character of Hounslow Heath start to be shown more and be more evident in the streetscape? So could you perhaps sort of direct quite what the sort of street trees are on some of the streets that used to be part of the Heath and direct that more towards something that has um, a thread back into um, the Heath tree? Um, and then thinking sort of moving forward about what it, what's the future role of some of the local centres like Cranford and Heston? As, as they move forward, as we've sort of all become more focused on our local area, do they have a sort of renewed role um, moving forward? Um, some of those ideas just short of showing those, um, the Hounslow Heath sort of example of just quite the extent it used to have and quite how that might imprint on some of the developments that have happened since. Um, and then overcoming some of the barriers. So um, Cranford Town Centre being a key one, obviously with sort of main road running all the way through, is there opportunities to perhaps try and support and restitch parts of the neighbourhoods back together? Um, I'll just pass over um, to the rest of the team to run through um, the next set and then we'll break out in discussions. Great, thanks, Jane. Um, so the next area is Central Hounslow. So this includes the area of Lumpton, taking in Lumpton Road and Lumpton Park up to the Great West Road. Um, Hounslow Town, which includes the town centre and the residential streets around it and South Hounslow and West Isleworth to the southeast. Um, the, the area is very much centred on the ancient Staines Road and Hanzo um, became an important stopping point for travellers heading into and out of London um, with regular markets there. And by the 1860s, the core high street was very much established along this route. 
um, and mainly terrace streets kind of came forward to the south um, that came along with Hounslow Station, which opened in 1850. Um, Lampton Village grew up to the northwest, um, which uh, at the junction of Great West Road and Lampton Road. Uh, and the district railway arrived in the 1880s, which again led to kind of rapid development in this area. Um, the Great West Road cut through Lampton Village in 1925, and that again dramatically altered its character, um, but it still retains some really lovely uh, old buildings. Um, today, the area has a very mixed use character. Um, it's also quite fragmented with layers of development over a long period of time. Uh, it's the commercial center for much of the borough. There are lots of opportunities for change. Um, so understanding what makes this area distinctive will be kind of an important part um, of the discussion later. Um, surrounding the town centre is mainly kind of suburban housing with kind of pockets of Victorian terraces and then more recent new development like at the High Street Quarter uh, and along London Road and Lampton Road. Um, the issues and concerns coming out of the survey um, was again the kind of impact of taller buildings in the area, um, the conversion of garages to dwellings and also poor quality extensions. Um, there were also other concerns coming out and we're continuing to review the feedback as well from the survey so we will kind of add to anything else uh, that comes up, add anything else that comes up. Um, some of the ideas that we want to discuss with you in your breakout room, uh, what defines the character of the town centre and um, what are its thresholds? So uh, does its mix of old and new buildings actually give the area its character or are there other distinctive features that contribute? Um, you know, how do we help the high street to maintain its role as the centre of town with the new development that's coming forward in the town centre? What does the kind of role and function of the high street look like? Uh, what opportunities exist to introduce new green areas and to better link the town centre with nearby existing green spaces? Uh, there's definitely a green space deficiency in this area, but you have some wonderful green spaces around it like Lampton Park and Hounslow Heath. So how can we look to improve those links? Uh, and how can the area around Hounslow train station better support its local community? Um, whether that's kind of new activities or uses to serve those neighbourhoods on either side and what opportunities exist for better routes into the town centre, particularly uh, walking and cycling routes. Um, and the next slide just shows an example of what an improved route could look like. Um, it's the missing link in Vauxhall, which is a sustainable kind of walking and cycling route uh, connecting some green spaces together in that area. So if we go on to Isleworth and Osterley, um, within this area, there are six neighbourhoods uh, from Osterley Park in the north to the Thames in the southeast at Old Isleworth and Sion Park and also South Isleworth and Ivy Bridge, uh, moving towards Twickenham in the south. Um, Isleworth began as an ancient riverside settlement. It was a farming and trading centre, and it was later home to royal and noble residents. The area has a really long history. Its wharf, wharfs were used since uh, medieval times. Um, it's got the ancient Staines Road, historic parks like Sion Park and Ostley Park, um, also pockets of Victorian residential areas like Spring Grove, Woodlands Grove, uh, and the village of Osterley as well. Um, and waves of development have kind of led to really diverse residential types from 19th century terraces to interwar semis, mansion blocks, post-war housing estates. Um, just walking down one street, I think it was Warple Road, I really noticed this kind of diversity in building ages and types. Uh, so today you've, you end up with this wealth of heritage assets, um, including the four conservation areas and all the listed buildings as well. Um, a key characteristic of the area is its large landscape parks. Um, but there are also many smaller parks as well, which are quite evenly spread across this area. And nearly 50% of this area is green space, uh, which is the highest amount across the borough. The area has a really transitional feel between the really urban uh, around Brentford and Chiswick and the more suburban at Hounslow and Feltham. Um, and as I mentioned, there's a real kind of mix of different typologies, including significant areas of industry, infrastructure and institutions, uh, especially large schools. So key concerns, the top concerns uh, relating to future change were tall buildings again, um, with 20% of responses relating to this concern, and also the impact of more residents on local services and poor design quality of new buildings. Um, and if we go on to the next slide, some of the ideas we want to discuss with you are, um, what is distinctive about the Isleworth section of the Thames? Uh, how can Isleworth's historic riverside character better relate to the rest of Isleworth? It feels like there could be, there are opportunities to better integrate the two, particularly around Twickenham Road. Um, how important are Stilly Park and Sion Park to the identity of the area? So we've highlighted these as key components to the character of the area. Um, do you agree? You know, what's your experience of living close to them? How can we establish better walking and cycling links between them? Um, how 
how can local parades and centres better support their residents? Um, so this area doesn't have a major centre, but has a number of smaller shopping parades and centres which play a really important role and should be celebrated. Um, so what opportunities exist to better support nearby residents? Uh, and finally, how can we repair and improve uh, key historic routes like London Road and Twickenham Road? Um, so that next slide just shows some of those uh, kind of screenshots of some of those routes um, and there could be opportunities for enhancing them. I'll hand over to Lionel for the last section uh, and then we'll go into the breakout rooms. Thanks, Lizzie. Um, so the first point to make mention as we move towards the east of the borough is that we fully recognise that Chiswick and Brentford are quite different to each other in terms of socioeconomic and physical character. The survey responses made this clear and we fully take that feedback on board. That being said, Chiswick and Brentford do also share a set of common spatial qualities. For example, their historically productive relationship to the riverside, uh, their sharing of an ancient high road as a central spine, and more recently their sort of severance, the severance of the neighborhoods on the north and the south of major motorways like the Great Western Road. So when trying to organize our thinking at the borough-wide scale, as this study will try to do, it can be helpful to consider how quite diverse areas evolve side by side in very different ways. Um, so taking on board your responses from the survey, we've also made a number of revisions, as Jane has mentioned, to those original area maps, both in terms of the way the boundaries have been drawn, but also in terms of their naming to, to reflect the spirit of your, your comments. And in the first breakout session, we, we, um, we heard uh, some of your comments about that. We'd like to hear more. Um, in the next one, we'd like to focus on some questions focusing um, on Chiswick and Brentford. Um, so in terms of commonalities, let me just go back one. In terms of commonalities, um, they both share this sort of riverside village ribbon development that occurred in the 18th and the early 19th century that you find in the stretch of the Thames north of Kew with buildings that were originally fishermen cottages, boat builders, sheds, public houses and maltings. Um, there was also this sort of prevalence of large villas and the emergence of private houses along the arterial road route in the 19th century. And then you had some quite attractive and successful experiments in urban design from late Victorian and Edwardian Newtown east of Brentford to Bedford Park, which we've already mentioned um, earlier in the presentation. And um, they also share this sort of issue of when, when major routes and arteries converge along with infrastructure and how that leads to a sort of detached and fragmented relationship between different areas and their buildings and particularly later commercial buildings and the streets that surround them. So um, if, if you think about the historic character of these places, there's a high concentration of historic assets, um, both in Brentford and Chiswick. There are, there are many conservation areas and listed buildings. Uh, Brentford has a particularly strong industrial heritage um, and both areas today have a sort of urban feel, um, but also quite distinctive and very uh, di different uh, riverside characters from the Thames and, and the Brent. Um, today, you also find quite diverse building typologies from detached villas and terraces to modern estates and more suburban cul-de-sac forms of development. And um, this is leading to quite an intricate layering of history and infrastructure, um, which sort of points clues towards the emerging character of, of these places. Um, but there's also the issue of um, a sense of extreme between areas that are that are sort of heavily protected and those that are experiencing um, constant change. So that tension is something that we'd like to, to hear your, your views on in the breakout session. In terms of the feedback from the survey, uh, tall buildings again uh, and, and the poor quality of new developments were the, um, was the main sort of issue um, that people responded to. But there were other concerns as well, including low traffic neighborhoods, the um, C9 Chiswick High Road Cycle Superhighway, the impact on air pollution, ensuring sustainable and green improvements, and the lack of community consultation. So the questions or the ideas that we'd like to discuss with you in the next breakout session is um, how can this ancient high road continue to evolve and support these sort of appropriate um, mix of uses, um, particularly in a post-COVID world and environment? Um, how can key employment locations be better integrated with their surroundings? Um, 
where do residents south of the A4 perceive their local centres to be? And do these centres all provide the necessary amenities within a 15 minute walk? And finally, what's distinctive about this section of, of, um, of the River Thames uh, from Chiswick up, up towards Brentford and how can that inform the future character of new developments? Um, on the Brentford side, um, how can we ensure that this, this place retains that really strong identity as a centre for creativity, production and, and manufacturing? What role could existing historic buildings play in celebrating that industrial heritage? How can the River Brent be animated to create a vibrant waterfront with attractive spaces? How could new developments, like major new developments, be better integrated with their surroundings? And also how can the major developments along the Great West Corridor draw on local character and become more outward facing than some of the buildings that have been uh, built there in the last few decades. And here are just some examples of projects that address the questions that we'd like to ask that issue of how you reinterpret the industrial uh, heritage and reappropriate those buildings. Uh, how you can animate a waterfront and make it vibrant and active and, and diverse in terms of the uses. Um, and finally, how, how can new developments uh, be well integrated, uh, both sort of physically, but also socially and sustainably into the neighborhoods that they exist in. Um, and one more sort of spread, uh, indicating the sort of context led um, approach to the um, infill development and evolution of historic uh, parades. This is an example from um, Hampstead in Camden. So that sort of covers the Chiswick and Brentford uh, section. And now I think um, Jane will lead us to the next breakout session. Yeah. So we've got um, the remainder of the time is really to focus on your individual areas. How do you want the character to evolve? How do we reflect the existing character and where we want to get to? Um, and how can future change help to support communities in each of these areas? So Lizzie again will um, open the breakout rooms and um, again do the same, join um, the group assuming that's the correct group that you want to go to. Um, if not, press not now and we'll um, be able to reassign you. So we'll move through to that and we'll move back just at the end. Okay, I'm sure that for everyone, no one quite managed to sort of get out everything that they wanted to say. Um, and certainly there's been a huge amount of discussion. So I suppose that the most important thing for me to say at this point is don't go, don't go away from this evening, not sort of passing on things that you wanted to feed in. Now, whether that's sending it through um, to us at the Hounslow at alliesandmorrison.com address, sort of send that in, equally making contact um, with council officers that um, you would have seen on um, the call this evening. Please don't sort of feel that you weren't able to kind of get through, um, get across what you wanted to. Um, uh, but I suppose impor importantly too, this isn't your only opportunity either. We will be taking back everything that's been said um, today um, and really trying to sort of feed that in as we start to move forward. Our next stages are really starting to craft what those sort of parameters for change might be in different areas and starting to test out how, where the sort of differences might exist, where the sort of common themes and principles might um, might sort of sit. Now, we'll be moving as we get into the spring to having some sort of draft ideas of that. And what we'd like to do is have a workshop that's probably a bit more interactive as well, where each of you are able to really sort of comment on some proposals. Once we've done that, um, to really get a sense from you about um, where those should go. Now, Obviously, there's lots of other aspects in terms of consultation going on. There's the town centres work that's consulting next week and they've got a live um, website. We'll send emails after this session for all of the various ways that you can engage um, with other studies as well. Um, but really, sort of the final thing for me to say is a huge thank you. Um, these 
projects sort of don't go anywhere without kind of community engagement and really being rooted in what local people feel and understand as their places so this evening for us has been hugely beneficial as a team and so it's a huge thank you to all of you for giving up um, your evenings we hope very much that this is sort of start of a conversation you stay in contact as ideas and sort of thoughts come to you over the following weeks please do send them through um, don't be shy um, in doing that but um, Thank you very much for this evening um, and um, we will look forward um, to meeting with you again for those that are able to join us in a few weeks time. That would be brilliant.